A few weeks ago, Apple quietly released new earbuds without much fuss at a surprisingly low price of only $49 with premium features such as the W1 chip. But how do these headphones hold up in the real world and are they a great, cheaper alternative to the AirPods? My name is Sebastian from Tech Century, and I'm here to help you make the right purchasing decision. Welcome to my full review of the new Beats Flex. Before getting started, I want to make sure that everything is transparent. I received these earbuds as a Christmas present and I don't have any affiliation to Apple or Beats. In terms of pricing, as I mentioned in the intro, the Beats Flex are available for $49 from the Apple website. They're actually available in a few different colors like blue, black, gray and yellow. And I have the black version right here. A really low price considering that their predecessor, the Beats X, were released three years ago for $150. In terms of design, the Beats Flex aren't truly wireless earbuds, instead they feature a neckband design, which you don't really see much these days. On my black version, the design overall is very minimalistic, with the only colored accents being the B here on the earbuds themselves, as well as like a super small Beats branding on one of the cable remotes. The cable on the Beats Flex is flat, with the neck portion being a little bit thicker and also stiffer. On both sides of the neckband, the Beats Flex then also have two cable remotes, which is nice to see because they are identical in weight and size, so you have a really balanced weight on your neck. In terms of comfort, I really felt like the Beats Flex were comfortable even for a longer period of time, because of the fact that most of the in the end, still low weight of 67 grams is actually on your neck and not on the earbuds themselves, which feels really good. And there are four different sizes of silicon ear tips included in the box so that you can find the fit that suits you best. In terms of controls on the left cable remote, we can find a microphone that's also for noise cancellation, a multi-function button that can play, pause, answer and hang up calls or activate your voice assistant, a volume rocker and thank god a USB Type-C port for charging instead of lightning. That being mentioned, inside the box Apple only includes a super short USB-C to USB-C charging cable, so if you're an iPhone user and only have lightning cables at home, you will need either an additional USB-A to USB-C cable for charging or USB-C wall charger in order to be able to actually charge these headphones and then to use it. On the right side of the earbuds then we can find only the on and off switch which also has a status indicator LED inside. In terms of battery life, Apple claims up to 12 hours on the Beats Flex, but in my own test the headphones only lasted 9.5 hours at 100% volume. Now that in itself isn't really bad in terms of battery life, but still a lot lower than what's claimed. With the volume closer to around 60%, the 12 hours could be realistic though. Before moving on to the mic quality test, I want to ask you for a favor. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you enjoy this video. I'm working hard to grow the channel here in 2021 and it would be an honor to have you on board. So this is a quick reference recording using the microphone in the camera. But now you're hearing the audio from the Beats Flex at the same busy street. And now you're hearing the audio from the Earphone Air Pro in the same environment. But now this is a reference recording using only the microphone in the camera. Now we're indoors with barely any noise around us. And this is an audio sample recorded in the same environment, but now with the microphone on the Beats Flex. And now this is the last sample recorded with the microphones in the Earphone Air Pro in the indoor environment. So now that I've had the chance to review the audio samples, I have to say that the Beats Flex are quite similar in comparison to the Earphone Air Pro that cost a little bit more. Especially in an indoor environment, I'm still pretty shocked though how bad Bluetooth earphones or the microphones on Bluetooth earphones just sound in 2021 and I really hope that there will be a big improvement this year. But what do you think? which headphones perform better to your taste. In terms of range, the Beats Flex feature Bluetooth 5.0, which is pretty standard in this price range. In terms of range, they covered 100% of our 1,200 square foot loft and roughly 50% of our 1,000 foot backyard, with my phone being at the other side of the apartment. This is identical to the range on the Air Pros that also have Bluetooth 5.0. While well, you can also of course use the Beats Flex on Android devices just as the AirPods, I was actually surprised that there's a dedicated Beats app that the Flex are compatible with. 
This excitement, however, didn't really last too long because the app is really basic, only allowing you to update the firmware and turning on or off the autoplay and pause when you magnetically attach these earbuds to another or the auto call answering when you pull them apart. Taking the Beats Flex out of the box and listening to them for the very first time, I was very impressed considering the low price of $50. As I expected, the bass was stronger than on other earbuds like the AirPods Pro, which I really like. Now for YouTube watching a lot of talking head content, I also really like the sound reproduction. And to be honest, it wasn't until I compared them side by side to other earbuds that I became a little bit disappointed. Compared to the AirPods Pro, they lag significantly when it comes to mids and highs. And while this is understandable since the Beats Flex only cost a fraction of the AirPods Pro, the comparison that really put the nail to the coffin for me was with the Earfun Air Pro that I reviewed in my last video. Not only in terms of mids and highs, but actually also in terms of bass, I really prefer the sound of the Earfun Air Pro compared to the Beats Flex. And to me, switching back to the Beats Flex, the audio just sounded muddy. But now it's time for my verdict. And there are a few things to really like about the Beats Flex other than their affordable price of $49, like the W1 chip that allows for super easy AirPod-like pairing with Mac and iOS devices, the USB-C charging port, relatively long battery life of over 9 hours, and the autoplay and pause when you magnetically attach the earbuds to one another. One of the highlights for me certainly is the easy device switching from my S10 to my iMac, which doesn't require to press a pairing button each time. However, to me, the Beats Flex just feel like a blast from the past and like they've fallen out of time. Now where true wireless earbuds like the Earphone Air Pro offer really good audio quality, good battery life and a neat and compact charging case for only $10 to $15 more than the Beats Flex, it feels really tough to recommend them to anyone. And with their neck band design, issues re-emerge that I had completely forgotten about, like loud wire noise when the wire rubs against your clothes. This is just something that you really forget when you don't use them for a time and it's just really annoying and something that I'm so happy that we don't have to deal with anymore on true wireless earbuds. But what do you think? Are neckband style wireless earbuds something that you would still buy in 2021 and what are your reasons for it? Mm -hmm.